Hey everybody, it's Kevin Kell with Chromaline. I just wanted to do a quick video for you guys today on solid percentages and stencil thickness and kind of what that relates back to you as a printer. So solid percentage, you always hear emulsion manufacturers talk about solid percentages, one of the characteristics uh, of an emulsion. And so what exactly is solid percentage? So solid percent solids refers back to the ratio of the, the solid mass that's suspended in a liquid. And in our case, that's liquid direct emulsion. Um, so say our chroma blue, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing a, a example with chroma blue and UDC HV today. So chroma blue is 50% solids. That means that 50% of that emulsion is water. And UDC HV is 35% solids. So what, what does that mean? That means 65% of that bucket is water. Uh, but what does that really mean for you? What it means is when you coat your screens with chroma blue 50% solids, 50% of what you put on that screen, when you coat on that emulsion on that screen, is going to evaporate away when that screen is drying. Say you're using a dual cure like our UDC HV, which is 35% solids. That means that 65% of that emulsion is going to evaporate away when that screen is drying. Um, so, yeah, like I said, Chroma blue, 50% solids. UDC HV, 35% solids. Um, so when we're, when we're talking about stencil thickness, we're always looking for that, that, that sweet spot, that 10 to 20% range of EOM. Um, and EOM stands for the emulsion over mesh. That's your stencil thickness. To find your emulsion over mesh, you're going to measure the thickness of the mesh itself, and then you would measure the thickness of the mesh plus emulsion and subtract the two. The difference between those two is going to be your, your stencil thickness, which is the emulsion over the mesh. And I'm going I'm to demonstrate that today. I use uh, the Fisher Isoscope FMP10. That's this thickness gauge right here. So you've got the, the gauge itself. You've got a the probe, and then you've got a, a plate that goes from the backside. So it uses magnetic induction to basically sandwich in between that material and say how far away that plate is from this probe. So let's let's measure a couple screens here now so you can kind of get an idea of how to how to measure that EOM, that stencil thickness. So I coated two screens. I've got one here. They're, they're both on 110 mesh. Um, so I coated chroma blue, one and one. So I coated them the exact same way, same scoop coater, same everything. So chroma blue coated one and one. And I've got UDC HV coated one and one. So let's turn the gauge on. And the nice thing about the, the Fisher Isoscope thickness gauge that I have, it actually will take uh, the average. So I like to, instead of just taking one measurement and you're, and you're good, just saying, okay, I know you take one measurement and it says the mesh is, you know, whatever it is, 110 microns thick. That being the case, if you were to move that around, um, you kind of want to have an average. So you want to take multiple points of measurement to actually have the, the true measurement. So with the plate, you would put that from the back side of the screen here. And then with the probe, you would sandwich in between the mesh. The mesh would be sandwiched in between the plate and the probe itself. So I usually just take 10 measurements or so. And like I said, the nice thing about the Fisher Isoscope is I can hit final and it actually will average out all of those measurements um, for you, basically. It does all the math for you, makes it a lot easier. So I just measured the mesh that came out to 110 or 108 microns thick. So now what I'm gonna do. I'm going to measure your overall stencil thickness. And the overall stencil thickness would be 
between so you'd be measuring the thickness of the mesh and emulsion together and I like to move that around a bit just to make sure you're getting a, a good average once again when you're hand coating screens they're not going to be perfect exactly the same thickness across that screen so if you get a good average that's going to tell you um, exactly what you're after. And then once again, take the final measurement. And that came to 140. So you take 140 microns, subtract 108 microns, and you're left with 32 microns uh, for your thickness of your EOM. So that's with the chroma blue coated one in one um, with the round edge of the scoop coater. I'm at 32 microns. So again, there, that's 50% solids in that emulsion. So I'll do the exact same thing with the UDC HD. I'll take the average. So the average, it's it's 110 microns thick. And, and that's a lot of times why I'll use a 110 mesh for um, EOM examples because I know for a fact that the thickness of a 110 mesh, the fabric thickness is going to be right around 110 microns for a 11080 screen. Um, so then what I'll do is I'm going to take the same measurements of just the with the emulsion in between. Take that average, and that was 129 microns. So 129 microns minus 110 microns is 19 microns for your EOM for the UDC HV. Coated the exact same way as I did with the chroma blue. So what's the difference? The difference is the solid content. Once again, like I said, more of the emulsion with the UDC HV is going to evaporate away because there's more water in that emulsion. So a while back, we did a case study, uh, and the case study really was, are cheaper emulsions really cheaper? So there's a lot of customers out there, they'll see you know, a bucket of chroma blue at one price, and brand X is at $5 less, and they think that they're going to save money just because it's $5 less a gallon. But are you really saving money? because it's just $5 less for that gallon. Um, so we did a case study to see exactly that. With the case study that we did, we coated screens with Chroma Blue and a competitor's Brand X Pure Photopolymer Emulsion, which was 36% solids. Uh, the customer site that we did it at had two MNR Unicode coders. Um, so we coated Chroma Blue on one coder and we coated Brand X on the other coder, and we just coded screens. And so what we did is we measured it because we wanted to be comparing apples to apples. Chroma Blue, we had one EOM, which was right in that 10 to 20% range. And then we had another uh, EOM for the brand X, which was significantly less. To get the same EOM between those two emulsions, we ended up having to coat brand X two and two, where Chroma Blue could be coated one and one. To get, this, to get the exact same EOM. So that being the case, um, we had, it, it, it really comes back to you know production time, the amount of emulsion that you're using. Um, so what, what it really came down to was Chroma Blue was capable of coating 179 more screens in an eight hour shift than Brand X because once again, if you're coding one and one, you've got your scoop coders coding once on the next screen, once up onto the next screen where brand X to get the exact same EOM had to do a two and two coat once, wait for it to come down, coat twice, then onto the next screen. So production times were significantly 
um, longer using the other emulsion. Also, when you're coating two and two, you're putting more emulsion on that screen. With that being said, Chroma Blue yielded 42% more screens per gallon than the Brand X did. We had 60 screens versus 42 screens out of one gallon. And that obviously that goes back to pressure, speed, uh, edge profile on the coating trough, but it was exact, you know, the same setup on both sides, comparing apples to apples to get the exact same EOM. Uh, we, we had to use far more emulsion. So there's more emulsion being wasted, more emulsion that's evaporating out of your screen to get to that same coating thickness as you could with a higher solids emulsion. So just because a gallon of emulsion costs less, does that mean that you're saving money? Uh, our case study showed that's, that's not the case. Um, one way of making an emulsion cheaper is by using lower solids. Um, and, and there's plenty of ways that you can make an emulsion cheaper, but obviously water costs less than the PVA, PVAC, the polymers, surfactants, leveling agents, all of that good stuff that goes in your emulsion really the, the nuts and bolts of that emulsion, um, that's, that's what adds cost to it. So one way of making it cheaper is just add more water. So it thins it out, but you end up using far more emulsion to get that same stencil thickness. Um, so it really comes down to, you know, lower cost per screen, reduce labor cost, improve production uh, e efficiency, better quality stencil because you have a little bit thicker of a stencil, much easier to achieve that thicker stencil, and you get more screens out of a bucket. So that translates back to purchasing fewer screens, uh, purchasing fewer gallons of emulsion per year. So where you think you're saving $5 by using this other emulsion on one gallon, really that one gallon is costing you far more than the emulsion that's actually a little bit more. Um, with that case study, I put together a nice little sheet here. This just goes through the entire case study that we did, lays out everything, all the stats, everything that we did, um, and what that correlates back to you. If you want, if you want this, this little handout, email me at kcouth at chromaline.com. And or you can reach out to me on Instagram, Emulsion Guru, and I'd be happy to, to email you a copy of this so you've got it in your hands. Um, keep an eye out. I'm going to continue to do the live Q&A sessions. So if you've got more questions on solid content, stencil thickness, anything that I've covered in this quick little video here, um, you know, shoot me a message, jump on the next live Q&A, and I'll be happy to discuss it then. Thanks, guys. Till next time.